Greetings friends and shalom again. Thank you for clicking on part two titled Wrestling with Yah. And in part one I discussed how the path and the gate into the kingdom of eternal life is a narrow path as our Messiah says in Matthew chapter 7 and it is a difficult path and few can find it. It's not a wide, easy way of verbal acceptance. It's deeper than that. And it does tend to discourage people. And, and if you've had sorrow and regret and wonder, if you've uh, committed any unpardonable sins, <clears throat> let this message be encouraging to you. Has Jacob wrestled with Yah? And his Hebrew name is Yaakov. And sometimes I'll say one or the other. Hopefully neither of them offend you. We're talking about the same guy here. And our forefathers, the, the Yah of Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov. And if you worship any other God, then this message is not for you. And neither is the website. And we don't mean to offend or create enemies. But uh, thank you for listening. And as one of my friends and brothers in the faith expressed to me lately, he said, Russell, if there was a light switch, I could just flip that switch and never sin again. That it would guarantee that he would never sin again. Of course, he would flip that switch. And it was actually another friend who asked him that question. And I answered the same as him when he asked me that question. I said, you bet. But here in the real world, it's not that easy. It's not about just flipping a switch or verbally saying you accept Jesus. And when we realize this, we need to be faithful. We need to even wrestle with our Creator in a loving way. He wants us to pursue Him. He wants us to wrestle with him as, as Jacob did. And we can read about that in Genesis chapter 32. And if you'll turn there with me, and in the Hebrew, it's uh, Genesis's Bereshit. But in, in chapter 2, and I'm going to pick up here in verse 9, and with a little background knowledge here that, that Jacob's going back to his homeland, he had been tricky in, in getting that birthright. And Esau, his older brother, they were twins, but he came out first, Esau, and, and deserved the birthright. And Esau wanted to kill him for a while. And uh, was very bitter and upset. And he was coming to meet Jacob here on, his, on Jacob's way back home and had armed servants with him. So Jacob was worried that um, there was going to be a battle here, a family feud, I guess we could say. And so in verse 9, Jacob says, O Yah of my father Abraham, and Yah of my father Isaac, and Yah who said to me, Return to your country and to your kindred, and I will deal with you, well with you. So he'll deal well. And so Yaakov right away is acknowledging the promises that he had obtained and bringing those to his creator. And he likes it when we bring promises to him. He doesn't need to be reminded of him, but he likes to know that we haven't forgotten them and we're holding him to his promises because he cannot lie. And so, in verse 10, he says, I am not worthy of the least of the mercies. True humility here with Jacob. I am not worthy of the least of the mercies of all the truth which you have shown to your servant. Referring to himself. For I have crossed over this Jordan and with my staff, and now I have become two companies. So he'd split up thinking, okay, if, if Esau's going to attack, at least he'll only get one and the other can escape. So Yaakov was using some strategy here. And just to be safe, better to be safe than sorry. 
and uh, not maybe perfect faith, but here he is going to his creator, our Father, and uh, and and praying this prayer. And in verse 11, it says, Deliver me, I pray, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau. For I fear him, lest he come and attack me, and the mother with the children. So he had children with him, his wives. For you, here again he's bringing a promise, you have said, I will surely treat you well and make your descendants as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered or for multitudes. And so here we see a spiritual wrestling here going on, even before the physical wrestling takes place. As we uh, continue over in, in chapter 22, we see here, And he rose at that night and took his two wives, his maidservants and his eleven sons, and Benjamin had not been born yet, and crossed over the ford of, of Jacob, Jabak. And he said to them, send them over the brook. And, and he sent over, and so he sends his family over first. Then Jacob, when he was left alone in verse 24, a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day, until sunrise. Jacob's wrestling with this man, or transfigured into a man. And now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched his socket. Now this is the this uh, supernatural man who's wrestling. He didn't prevail against Jacob. Jacob was a good wrestler. And he touched his socket of his hip, and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint while he was wrestling with them. And then uh, this man says to him, Let me go, for the day breaks. But then Jacob said, I will not let you go until you bless me. And so David had figured out that this wasn't just a regular man that he was wrestling with and that there was blessings to, to come with this man. This wasn't some thief in the night. This wasn't some bad guy coming to, to take him over or kill him. But this had some intentions behind it that he didn't figure out, but he knew that he could obtain a blessing. And so he wrestled. He wouldn't let him go. He got him in some kind of a, a locking position that wouldn't let him go. And our Creator was having fun with him, of course, and, and just seeing how zealous Jacob would be. And, and he likes us to pursue him and to not let go, to not give up on our own accord. And to just say, okay, that's it. I'm done. You can go. Even when our Creator wants us to let him go. Let's be like Yaakov here and wrestle with him. So continuing here, in verse 27, so he said to him, what is your name? So he said to him, Jacob. Of course, he knew Jacob's name, but just asking him anyway. And then he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, or Yaakov, but Israel. For you have struggled with Yah and with men and have prevailed. So he was a prevailer. He was a conqueror. He was an overcomer with men and with Yah. Then Jacob asked him, saying, Tell me your name, I pray. So here he's praying. He knew he's, this is a prayer here. And asking for his name. And he said, Why is it that you ask me my name? Because here he was transfigured in a man, but Jacob had some things figured out, but wanted to hear the words from his own mouth. And, and then he said, What it is that you should ask about my name? So he doesn't give it to him here. He uh, doesn't uh, just make it easy for him. And then he blesses him there. So he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Jacob. 